Hello, I'm Joe Collymore and welcome to South Shore Scoop. This is where we explore interesting people, places, and things. Today, we're meeting with Beth Lyons, Executive Director of South Shore Habitat for Humanity. Beth, how are you today? I'm wonderful, thank you. Thank you for meeting with us. So we're here at the site of a planned housing track for South Shore Habitat for Humanity, is that right? Yes, we're here at uh, Whiting Street and we're going to be building two affordable homes. Now, before we get into the details of that, let's talk a little bit more about who you are in your role as Executive Director of South Shore Habitat for Humanity. How long have you been with the organization? Uh, I've been with the organization for three years. I started in the fundraising development department and about three months ago became the executive director. Now, as I understand it, you're also local to the community here in Hingham. I am, I grew up in Hingham. So this is a very near and dear opportunity to do something so close to home for you. It is, it's very exciting for me and I'm, I'm particularly excited to have this project come to fruition. Now, Beth, many of us are familiar with Habitat for Humanity and we immediately think of former president Jimmy Carter and former First Lady Rosalind Carter. Now, what prompted you to join this venerable institution? Well, I've been in uh, working for nonprofits my whole career. Uh, previously, I worked at a uh, nonprofit that built specially adapted housing for severely injured veterans. And through that, I learned that a house and a home is much more than a roof and four walls. It's a safe place that helps families have stability and build a foundation for the future to allow them to succeed. And living in this area, affordable housing is hard to come by. And so I, this opportunity came up and I thought, well, I'm close to home, uh, it'd be great to be giving back to the community. Beth, what does affordable housing look like on the South Shore? Well, on the South Shore, the steep cost of affordable housing and the low inventory is really creating a serious challenge. Uh, younger generations and low-income families can't afford to live here. And if they can't afford to live here, that's going to greatly impact the workforce, which will have severe implications on the economy. The South Shore Chamber of Commerce and the South Shore Economic Development Corporation are working really hard to share information and to resolve these issues. Um, and in fact, Norwell, Hanover, and Situate are now preparing to start building some affordable homes. When we talk about affordable housing, particularly in affluent communities like here in Hingham, um, it has a, a rather dubious connotation, if you, if you, know, if you know what I'm I do. talking about. What exactly does that mean in the context of Hingham? Well, for a lot of towns, um, affordable housing has, does have a bad connotation. People think it's the projects. And really what affordable housing refers to is that you're only paying a maximum of 30% of your annual income towards housing. Now in Hingham, the average home is over $900,000 and the average rent is $2,700. So when you think about low-income families, this is not affordable for them. They cannot live in this community. And they would have to earn about $72 an hour in order to afford an apartment here. Now this development, this initiative that's gonna take place here on Whiting Street, it's actually a collaboration, if you will, between South Shore Habitat for Humanity and the Hingham Affordable Housing Trust, is that correct? It is correct, yes. We work with the Affordable Housing Trust to identify unused parcels of land where we can build affordable homes. And Hingham is so committed to increasing affordable housing in their community. Um, the state requires 10% of every town to have 10% of their homes to be affordable. Hingham has met that requirement, but they're continuing to find more ways to bring affordable housing in, they realize the importance of it. There's a reference to what's called a perpetual deed restriction. 
What does that mean and how does that apply to this particular development? Well, the Affordable Housing Trust and the state require a perpetual deed restriction. And what that means is it's the home is restricted. It will always remain affordable. So when the family moves from here, if they do, the next buyer will be able to afford this house because it will continue to be affordable. It also protects the town's investment in this project. Beth, if a homeowner is purchasing this new home below market price, what impact, what relationship does that have on homes of comparable size in this area? Well, there's been a lot of research um, regarding that because there are concerns. And there is no proof that affordable housing impacts um, a, home, a homeowner's property. Um, when somebody is selling their property and an appraiser comes out, they don't comp it according to affordable housing. They comp it to the other houses in the neighborhood. So that will not bring down their value. But if you take a look here at, on this piece of property, to have this house gone that's falling apart, that has animals in it and is completely overgrown and bringing in two new homes, quality homes. It's certainly, in my estimation, going to make this, the properties around here much more uh, valuable. Now, I understand that there were also some concerns expressed with regard to um, water that runs behind the property and where the location of the septic system might be. How is the Habitat for Humanity addressing that? Uh, we've had two engineers take a look at the property and we've made plans to remove the septic system that is still here for this house. And they have looked at how the septic system that we put in will affect the property here. And the engineers have determined there will be no adverse effect to the, the land. I read somewhere that it takes somewhere between 500 and 800 individuals and approximately $250,000 to build each home. What do 500 to 800 individuals look like on the job site? Now, are you bringing them in in different phases of development? Yes, um, we can't have 500 volunteers here at one time. Um, we invite volunteers to come build with us three days a week. We take six to 10 volunteers at a time and they work with our construction crew and you don't have to be an expert, you learn from them. And it takes about nine months to build a house. So if you think 10 volunteers, three days a week, that's close to a thousand volunteers to build a house. And when we look at volunteers, what, what kind of skills does one need to have to come up and be one of a crew of 10 to volunteer? None. You can come and uh, never even picked up a hammer before. And our crew is amazing. They know how to work with volunteers. They love working with volunteers. They love teaching things. And I got to tell you, recently I was at our Easton project and our crew would not let me just stand there and wait and they put me to work. And believe me, I am not a construction expert, um, but I learned a lot in that two hours that I was there and it was really, it was really fun. As far as the $250,000, the price to build one of our Habitat homes runs between $180,000 and $300,000. Of course, it depends on what needs to be done to the property. For example, this property, we need to tear down the house, remove a septic system, put in access to the property. So those are more ex extensive expenses that we will have to look at but we do sell the homes for approximately $180,000. And these homes are funded through donations. So Beth, how much do you need to raise? We need to raise approximately $600,000 for this project. At this point, we've raised about $100,000. That has come from grants, uh, foundations, and some very generous donors in Hingham. We will be reaching out to the town of Hingham for their support. Um, we'll also be applying for more grants uh, to help us build this project. 
So how exactly can a local resident here get involved in supporting South Shore Habitat for Humanity and more specifically this project? Well, there's many ways they can volunteer on the build when we start. Uh, they can join a local partnership committee, which is helping raise the funds to support this project. And they can donate uh, services or do uh, in-kind products, for example, materials. Um, we have, uh, in Easton, we have a uh, company that's donating the roof. They're putting the roof on the house. Um, we have a company that donates the insulation. So there are a lot of ways that we can reduce that cost of $600,000 by donations from local residents. Is there a website that one can go to to learn more about this as well as sign up and volunteer? Yes, there is. It's sshabitat.org. And on November 17th, we'd like to invite the town to come to a town webinar and learn a little bit more about this project, ask questions, and hopefully participate in and having an investment in helping their neighbors. Is there anything else you want to share with us, with us Beth? We're very honored that the town has selected us to do this project, and we really hope that the community will come out and support us and, and invest their time and money and efforts to make this project a reality for many of these families who are really struggling to find housing. Beth, it's great visiting with you here. You're doing awesome work, continued success, continued staying safe and healthy. Well, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to share this information.